When I was at school, there was a triangle in the common sense cookery book. And the bottom rung of the triangle was meat and dairy. The next rung of the triangle was grains. And the next rung of the triangle was fruit and vegetables. And right up the top were fats and sugars. In this video, we will learn from Barbara O'Neill, a naturopath and health educator committed to helping you achieve optimal health through natural and balanced nutrition. Today, we're going to discuss a topic that is fundamental to our well-being, the correct food triangle that we should all be adapting for a healthier life. The food triangle, often referred to as the food pyramid, is a visual guide to help us make healthier food choices. However, the conventional food pyramid that many of us grew up with is outdated and doesn't reflect the latest understanding of nutrition. What we need is a food triangle that emphasizes whole, natural foods that nourish the body and support long-term health. The key to adopting this food triangle is balance. By prioritizing whole foods and minimizing processed options, you can create a diet that supports your overall health and well-being. Remember, every meal is an opportunity to nourish your body. Take control of your health by making better food choices every day. Let's listen to what Barbara has to say about the food we eat. The question is asked, where do we get our calcium from if we're not eating any dairy products? Let me show you. This is a glass of milk. And this milk is high in protein and it is high in calcium. But animal protein is very dirty burning fuel. In fact, only 58% of it is burnt as fuel. And that's leaving a sulfur waste which has a very acid effect on the body. So this 42% waste has to be neutralized or alkalized and so the body uses the most alkaline mineral, which is calcium, to negate the sulfur residue. How much calcium is that left for the human body? None. In fact, the countries in this world that are consuming the highest amounts of dairy products have the highest incidence of osteoporosis. Okay, so... If milk is not the source of calcium, how do we get this important mineral? So where are we going to get our calcium from? We will get our calcium from the same place the biggest boned creatures on the planet get their calcium from. Where does the elephant get its calcium from? And I think its leg bone would be about as big and as thick as me. Greens. Barbara will now tell us sources of calcium in plants. Let's have a look at calcium. Calcium in the vegetarian kingdom, its highest is found in the sesame seed. And a very nice way to eat the sesame seed is as tahini. At Misty Mountain Health Retreat, we do quite a few dressings and sauces that contain tahini. If you look in Lebanese food, their baba gamush has tahini, their hummus has tahini. So there's a lot of foods that contain tahini, gives a beautiful creaminess to it. Very high in calcium. So instead of giving the children a glass of milk when they get home from school, have a platter of raw veggies and a little bowl of hummus <laughs> and let them dip in there. They will get more calcium. That's the calcium that they can use. What's another natural source of calcium? Also soy. And again, the soy must be organically grown, non-genetically modified. And the other legume is chickpeas. And that's why your hummus is such an excellent form of calcium because it's a combination of your chickpeas and your tahini. Barbara will now tell us another source of calcium in plants. Figs. Your dried figs are quite a high source. Any other sources of calcium in plants? Calcium is one of the 
alkaline minerals and it is found in high amounts in your greens. Why do people have insufficient levels of calcium? Most people lack calcium because they lack vitamin D. They're not having the sunshine. Or they're taking things that leach the calcium. Caffeine leaches calcium. Sugar leaches calcium. So can you see, you have to look at the whole picture. Barbara will now explain the value of margarine. And what was introduced, I think in about the late 80s, 90s, was margarine, yeah? As an alternative. Is margarine any good? Well, let me show you how it's made. Let's make margarine out of this flaxseed oil. Well, we've got a problem. And the problem is the oil is liquid. So we have to make it solid. How is it made solid? They saturate it with hydrogen ions. To do that, they have to use a catalyst and they usually use nickel or aluminium. So every tub of margarine has a trace of nickel or aluminium in it. And we also know how they both, both those metals are contributing to Alzheimer's. So now it's saturated with the hydrogen ions and this causes this hydrogen atom to flick over as this one, as this one. Now the double bond has been lost and the oil is straight. And that's exactly what is wanted. Now you open the lid of the margarine and it'll spread. It'll spread very nicely. But this structure that I've drawn for you there is not known in nature. It is very closely con it's very similar in molecular structure to plastic. Margarine is a toxic fat. It is not known by the body. And when it goes into the body, the body cannot deal with it. It cannot put it anywhere. So it has to get rid of it as soon as possible. And so it tries to eliminate it via the skin. Do you know skin cancer rates have increased since margarine was consumed? And heart disease has not dropped. And what's the definition of insanity? to do what you've always done and expect different results. It is not working. Margarine is a toxic fat. It should not go anywhere near the body. Some people say to me, well, what about, what about olive oil margarine? My question is, what about it? If you take the lid off it, is it liquid like olive oil? No. The only, the only way you can safely get your olive oil solid is to put it in the freezer. And I know some families do that. And the children are quite excited to have a tub of butter, but it's actually just frozen olive oil. <laughs> and you put it on your bread and it will spread. So then the next question is asked, well, what do you put on your bread? I like olive oil on my bread and my husband likes avocado on his bread. Let's listen to Barbara talk about the history of food pyramids. That's the way it was. What should the food pyramid look like? What should our triangle be? Fruit and vegetables. For some people, the fruit has to be reduced, so we'll put fruit on sideways, but vegetables, no limit on the vegetables. And the next rung, Legumes, seeds, they're good proteins, grains, remember the grains are the negotiating part of the meal and then up the top we've got the fats and the sugars. So we'll say oils, honey, all very concentrated foods, maple syrup, my rung has three because I believe that the vegetarian food and the vegetarian protein is a far superior one. Barbara will now explain why this food pyramid is better. Let's have a look at that triangle through a few different windows. Let's look at it through the pH window. Does it get a tick? It does, because the most alkaline forming food are your vegetables, so it gets a tick. Let's look at it through the point of view of the colon. The colon needs to be swept every day. Vegetables are high in fiber, high in minerals, low in sugars. Whereas fruit is high in fiber, high in sugars, but low in minerals. So for your healing, your vegetable is superior. So for the colon, oh yes, we've got our fiber. What about the liver? 
And as we showed in a previous lecture, the liver needs beta carotenes found in your orange and your red coloured vegetables. There it is in large amounts. It also needs protein. Protein is coming through in your legumes, in your seeds. The other thing up the top here is your nuts. Nuts are an excellent form of protein, fibre and fats, but you must not overdo them. If you overdo nuts, you can develop an allergy to nuts. They're very concentrated food. So looking at it from the liver point of view, it gets a tick. We've got our proteins here. We've got our beta carotenes in our orange and our yellow and our green colored vegetables. What about the brain? We haven't discussed the brain in detail yet. But the brain needs the essential fatty acids in the oils and nuts. It needs the proteins to make the neurotransmitters out of. It needs the vegetables for the minerals, so the brain does get a tick. What about cost? What's your cheapest food in this triangle? It is your vegetables. <laughs> Your concentrated foods are the most expensive, but you only need a little bit of them. So cost-wise, it gets a tick. What about availability? There's always fresh fruit and vegetables available. And your legumes, your seeds can all be stored. So we get a tick again. Here are some final thoughts from Barbara about food pyramids. So you will find a lot of nutrition books still have the old, basically outdated <laughs> triangle. But there are many nutritionists and doctors who are claiming that this is the accurate triangle. And I totally agree. And you can see by looking at it through our different windows, they all get a tick. Remember, your health is the lock and we're here to provide the keys. Keep turning to Key Health for insights that unlock your full potential. The key to lifelong vitality is in your hands, it's just one bite away.